When choosing an immersion wart chiller, should you go with a copper immersion wart chiller or a stainless steel immersion wart chiller? There's quite a few differences. Let's go over them. One aspect to look at with a wart chiller is obviously thermal conductivity. When comparing thermal conductivity of copper and stainless steel on a one-to-one -one basis, with the same thickness of copper and the same thickness of stainless steel, copper has a much better heat transfer rate than stainless steel. However, at the homebrew scale, there's not a whole lot of difference that you're gonna see in your brew day if you're using stainless steel or copper. Also, the tubing thickness is different for copper tubing as well as stainless steel tubing for homebrewing. So comparing them one-to-one -one isn't a really fair comparison since stainless steel tubing for homebrewers is thinner than copper tubing is. Another aspect to consider is that copper is naturally antimicrobial. When bacteria gets on copper, the positive charge of the copper naturally kills the bacteria because of its oxidation reduction action. A stainless steel chiller does not kill bacteria. Stainless steel can actually be used as a petri dish to grow bacteria. Maintenance of both are very simple. As long as you remember to rinse off all the hot wort from the coils right after you use it in your brew. Then just dry it off and store it in a safe place. Stainless steel will remain shiny over a long period of time, whereas copper will get a, an oxygen patina on it that'll dull the copper. It won't look as shiny, but it's not harmful to you. Due to the properties of copper, when it's put in an acidic solution, which has a negative charge, the positive ions from the copper will go into solution. This has been proven to be a yeast nutrient that'll help activate your yeast and keep them healthy during fermentation. Another thing to consider is if you're a low-dough brewer or not. Low-dough is low dissolved oxygen. If you are a low-dough brewer, you wouldn't want copper in your system. You would want to go with stainless steel. Another aspect to consider is the durability of your equipment. Stainless steel is very hard and hard to damage, whereas copper is very soft and easy to damage. Both copper and stainless steel can freeze and rupture if you don't drain them after use. Copper, being a softer material, will rupture easily. To avoid any ruptures, just make sure you drain the water from your chiller when you're not using it. So as you can see, there are things to consider when choosing between a copper immersion chiller and a stainless steel immersion chiller. Both chill very well in a homebrew setup, but there are different aspects to consider to decide which one's right for your setup. As always, I hope this helped in some way. Ask us any questions you have, send this video to people, um, like, subscribe, share, and uh, we'll see you along the way.